Hi, I'm Hannah, and I'm joined by Andy Akimulari, former Blue Peter presenter and current presenter of Inside Out West. How are you doing? Yeah, good, good. I'm really good, actually. You've not been doing much. It's fantastic, so. Yeah, the, the amount of times I've been practicing <laughs> that, so I'm quite proud. <laughs> Um, so first up, I really want to congratulate you on your um, RTS award for your um, documentary on extremism. Yeah, well, no, look, thank you. Um, it was, uh, yeah, so I'm now with the Inside Out West Midlands and I got a Royal Television Society Award for the Extremes Dark, which is phenomenal because it, it's actually voted for by people in the extreme, which means people think I'm doing a good job, which is great, and I'll take it, I'll take it. Yeah, um, so what made you decide to do the documentary? Uh, I mean, it was, it was actually offered to me by my and also the editor of the show Inside Out West basically one of the things I, I spoke to her about when I first took the job was that I really wanted to challenge and really wanted to get it meaty and this sounded like the perfect opportunity to take on something incredible and something that was very current and relevant as well and they're really good uh, here in Birmingham with Inside Out it's probably the best I think of all the Inside Outs in the country and the production values are really really good and I worked hand in hand with uh, Joel the producer and he's amazing his attention to detail is just phenomenal and basically he challenged me to a different and you know, I realised that a lot of the skills I've gathered over the last few years from kids TV to you know entertainment to now factual and you know, current affairs really came to play in this doc and you know, we did well. Yeah, it shows how you got an award. Yeah, it was amazing. It's taken a long time, ten <laughs> years I told thee. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um so when you joined last year, obviously um you were doing something so different to what you were usually associated with doing, obviously a lot yeah. of children's stuff. Um, I mean, is it possible to ask you which you prefer? It's hard because I couldn't have got to where I am now without the stuff I did in the past. Um, so I went from Blue Peter and then I did Four Boy Yard, which is a uh, sort of a game show. Um, so I saw it is a game show. Um, um, game show um, did for CITV, which got stretched me in a different kind of way because the thing about Blue Peter is it's, it's amazing. You get to do everything, but you never specialise in one. So now I'm primarily specialising in which I did entertainment and now I'm doing current affairs and I realise a lot of the skills I've learned along the way have really helped me to get to where I am now. The difference about current affairs compared to something like Blue Peter and maybe Fort Boyard is that you've got to bring your legs down a little bit because people think you're the voice of authority and you've really got to deliver. And you know we're talking, talking about stuff from murders to light-hearted stuff, i.e. stuff that's really cool and interesting in Midland. So you've got to find that balance and that tone. But as I said, like, you know, everything I've done thus far has helped me to get to where I am now. Yeah. And as you were just saying, you've done so much. I mean, um, you've interviewed people like Lewis Hamilton, mm -hmm. Usain Bolt. Um, what are your career highlights? I've just said, loads. If you can pick. Uh, yeah, it's very... I, I think I've lived this kind of surreal life over the last few years. Um, and it's been hard to try to come down or come back to normality. So inside out, it just feels like a sort of a, a break. Um, as, as in like a break in a car, I've just slowed down a lot um, because I've travelled a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, Usain Bolt, he's my favourite sportsman of all time and uh, what he's done in the modern era is incredible. And it was an honour to interview him, but I also hold the world record for swimming across the deepest part of the ocean in the world, um, the Mariana Trench, which is the Pillar Trench, which is what I actually swam across, which is part of Mariana Trench. And I was unable to swim 10 weeks previous to that, and now I have the world record for swimming across the deepest part of the ocean in the world. So yeah, I mean, I've got quite a lot of highlights, but on a personal level, that swim was pretty incredible for me, and an achievement I don't think I could put on. Yeah, absolutely amazing, as you said, to be able to go from not being able to swim at all, mm -hmm. and then a matter of weeks later, if you're doing that. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Black men can swim, yes! <laughs> but it's, it's weird, right? Because there's only three black people in the entire world that have a swim world record, and I'm one of them. And a lot of people find it really hard to believe, but there's a huge problem between the black community and also the Asian community about with swimming. And that was what I set out to try and change, if I'm honest. I wanted people to see me do something pretty ridiculous and make me think, do you know what, I might just swim meters if I can yeah. or try and learn to swim because it's a life skill and so many people around the world die from drowning every yeah. year even in Britain close enough to four or five hundred people die a year from drowning and a lot of those are young children as well and I just wanted to home in the fact that this is something that's needed if not just for health reasons some of them can actually save your life and look I can swim now which I'm yeah, happy so about <laughs> yeah 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 like, as you were saying what you said there's only three black people with records why do you think that is I don't know I've been trying to figure it out something I really want to pursue maybe a doctor at some point um, I'd really like to look into because it's something that's really quite a shocking statistic and a lot of black people are from countries surrounded by water as well which is interesting and I think what triggered it in my head was watching the Olympics 2012 for instance in Sydney there was a guy called Eric the Eel a lot of people remember and I can't remember I think it was from Equatorial Guinea or somewhere like that and he had to be kind of clapped in because he basically taught himself to swim and I was like 
Why is that? And also, we live in Britain. Why don't we have many black swimmers in Britain? And perhaps it's something to do with the danger, perhaps. It's also something to do with the cultural aspects of it. But I also think, you know, it's financial. You know, um, to go swimming in Britain, it's about six pounds, five pounds for some. And I don't know, like a lot of black families, a lot of Asian families in Britain aren't off the middle class. And I still think swimming is a relatively middle class thing. So I think it's a given to the middle class. And it's not such a given to the working class because it actually costs a lot of money. Um, you do a lot of work with charities. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is that something that's so important to you? I don't know. Like, I, 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 I love. It's not really cliche. It's not really corny, but I love giving back um, in that respect. Um, not in a corny way, but actually, I think it keeps me relatively grounded. Um, to understand that it's not all about telly, um, but also I, I've taken a back seat from supporting charities and actually trying to create movements myself because I think it holds a bit more clout for me. It's something I feel personal about. So. Recently, um, I created a swimming project which was trying to get a lot of ethnic minorities um, and women of all shapes and sizes, men and women together, um, men and women of all ages, um, body shapes, and all that kind of stuff to take on the challenge of their lives. So a lot of them couldn't swim, 15 of them all together. And we got them swimming in relatively 10 weeks and we, we all swam a mile in open water. Um, so the journey there for me was actually to prove a point that swimming is taught the right way, in the way that people understand they will actually do it. People just need to get off their behinds and actually think of something constructive and something entertain, entertaining that people can latch onto. The tried and tested methods clearly have not been working over the last few years. We've actually had a decline in swimming in Britain, period, over the last few years post the Olympics. It, uh, I think over a quarter of a million people have stopped swimming in Britain. And we, are, if you're an ethnic minority, you're three times less likely to be able to swim as well. So there are these statistics that we're kind of throwing around. And actually what we need to realise is we need to kind of readdress how we teach it. And so we can incorporate people of all ages, all nations, all creeds, all sizes. This can only, this can only be good for the future of British Yeah, definitely. That's what I want to do. Um, and finally, what advice would you give someone who kind of wants a career similar to yourself? Oh, it's more something they ask all the time. Hard work, um, have a thick skin, network, meet people, have an idea of where you want to go and what you want to create. Because if you don't, they don't. So the more information you have to give them, the better. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you for Thanks. joining us. Cheers.